All right, so this will be part two of the basic setup of the rotary axis to be uh, um, setting it up so you can use it for doing any probe routines, surface scans, or probing uh, against, say, uh, a tab or ridge such as a keyway in a, a shaft. Um, the important thing to remember is Probit is going to expect that you make the center line of the rotary axis be equal to Z0 and also be equal to 0 on the axis that is perpendicular. Um, so in my case, my, my rotary is parallel to the y-axis, so I want it to be aligned such that x is 0. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, the easiest is to, after you've set up your basic settings, go to the rotary tab and there's a spot here to do set up the center line where all it requires you to do is enter in the diameter of a bar or a piece of round stock or it could be your chuck in this case i'm going to put the diameter of this large sharpie marker i'm going to approximately put the the probe tip over the center it's not exactly centered but uh by just getting it approximately close, the routine is going to go down, touch Z. It's going to go make a clearance move to one side, uh, go down by the radius of the value you entered. It'll clear back to the other side. And now that it knows roughly where the center line is, it's going to go off and touch the top. And um, you can see that the Z surface value box here got changed to be the radius of the diameter I put in over here. So basically it did a Z touch off as part of the, the rotary axis center line setup and set it. Um, you'll see it didn't set the rotary angle. Uh, that's not important for what we just did. Again, we can set that if we have our part ready to go. And uh, so now any time that you're off, you move around somewhere, if you want to get back to the center line, make sure you're clear and just tell it to move back to the center line and it'll do that. Um, again, it's based on having the, the axis that's perpendicular being zero. Um, now you don't have to use this method if you don't want to. Uh, you could do it piecemeal on your own. Again, you could do something like coming down on one side manually and uh, say I wanted to zero it. Actually, I'm not going to do it that way. What you could do is come back here and do a like a probe ridge move. Again, we want to probe in the X direction on a ridge. Uh, we're going to tell it to go down. Probably not the full radius, but let's do 0.3 inches. I'll run this routine. And then all that's done is move it roughly to the center line. Again, um, you can zero it manually. You could have had it set to zero over here. And then we're currently set, but you know, assuming we weren't, all you would then have to do is once you're over the center, it's already got the radius here. You could have manually, manually entered that and tell it to probe to set the Z. And there. So essentially, that rotary axis can be set up a couple of different ways. Um, 
if you're really just getting started setting it up again all I did was throw the rotary axis down I didn't really do any alignment work um, you could do an edge probe and see how misaligned it is let's do an edge move let's do a negative two inch because I'm gonna start in a positive Y and go negative so just confirming I entered a negative, say yep. So here you can see I'm roughly 17 thou from the first point to the second point off on my delta. So again, I could spend some time getting my rotary axis aligned better if I tried. I just threw it on my table real quick. But uh, this gives you just kind of the idea of some of the tools you can use to manually set it up. And again, the most key important thing to remember is set up your rotary axis such that the center line is zero zero for z and the the perpendicular axis so